My last thought, and then we'll get to Garibaldi, is that Coast Range, which is the backdrop for Garibaldi, is granite country. From Vancouver to Alaska, if you were just dropped at random on any spot in the Coast Range and, you, and someone asked you what the rock was that you were standing on, without looking at it, if you just said granite, you'd probably be right 70% of the time. So it's granite country. As the Rockies are essentially limestone, sandstone, and shale country, <coughs> one and the other, the uh, Coast Range is granite country. That's Manplan Mountain, the Chief is a famous example, but the Ashloo Range, the Cantalus Range, these are all granite-spired peaks. Climbers love granite because it holds together. Climbers don't really like volcanic rock because by and large it's just lousy handholds, it falls apart. If a geologist made a map of the sea of sky country, that's what they're looking for. Now, you don't really need to know anything about that map other than geologists color granites, either pink or red or some shade of that. All of that is granite. So that just gives you a sense of how much of the landscape that we call coast range is underlain by granite. One point I want to make with this map is that just notice that in the western part of Garibaldi Park, there's a lot of other stuff <coughs> other than granite. And really that's, I think, why we love it so much. Not that granite's bad, but granite is inaccessible. Uh, just because it's so rugged and it forms uh, tough mountains to get around in. So granite, how come we've got so much granite? Well, in a sense, granite is nothing more than essentially failed volcanic rock. It's part of the same plumbing system we talked about that feed volcanoes, but it's the part of the plumbing system that never made it to the surface. It's essentially magma that freezes in place on the way up and essentially cools to crystallize in much coarser grained and therefore lighter colored looking rock. Chemically, a lot of granite is a dead ringer for volcanic rock. The difference really is not in composition, it's in grain size. And it's a funny thing, but fine grained rocks tend to be darker in color. So anyways, another interesting thing is that that, call it the granite factory, related to the subduction zone, it's been going on for 180 million years. Ever since the Atlantic Ocean started to open 180 million years ago, North America has been moving westwards. We've had a subduction zone, and that subduction zone has been producing grants. And so there is essentially 180 million years of granite locked up underneath British Columbia. Most of what's on the surface is between 100 and 150 million years old. So the youngest granites are still down there, they haven't got to the surface. But that begs the question, how does any granite that starts 20 kilometers down ever get to the surface? And that relates to the simple story of uplift and erosion. Uplift and erosion. We have a mountain belt here. Uh, the mountain belt is inextricably linked to the subduction zone. The subduction zone is essentially a way where you create a lot of heat at depth um, that heats the overlying crust and the land rises. Uh, in part, there's a little bit of a squeeze, but mostly it's just that the crust under British Columbia is hotter. That causes it to rise. When things rise, they're vulnerable to erosion. So glaciers and rivers sort of move the stuff off the top. The land keeps rising. And you can see here, in the last 10 million years, the coast mountains have, at their core, the highest peaks have come up over three and a half kilometers. Um, in the Waddington area, four kilometers. In the Garibaldi area, more like two kilometers. And they're rising, uh, in the Garibaldi area, two millimeters a year. That's sort of the rate of the land rise. Uh, erosion, of course, is working in the opposite fashion to, to wear that down. So the mountains rise, the landscape rises, if uplift exceeds the rate of erosion. And that's been the case in the coast mountains, at least for the last couple million years. So this is just the simple math, that even small rates of uplift, given large amounts of time, can bring rocks that were formed deep in the earth to the surface. And that's why today we have mostly granites at surface. Okay, so that's sort of a, a bit of a long preamble to Garibaldi. 